Swift pros know that protocols are not just interfaces. They are the backbone of clean, composable code. And in this video, I'm going to show you protocol-oriented programming that will help you take your code to the next level. But before we get started, I want you to help out and click that like and subscribe button. The first thing we're going to talk about is object-oriented programming. Lots of us have come from an object-oriented language. Swift certainly is object-oriented as well. Um, Objective-C was object-oriented. And we're going to look at how it differs by presenting the problem that object-oriented programming gives us and how protocol-oriented programming solves this issue. To get started, I've created an enum to encapsulate uh, the information we are working on, just to make it so that there's no conflicts with the compiler. And here's our superhero protocol. And the first thing we have to do is turn this into a class if we're going to do object-oriented programming because we have to make it an object. So we're going to call this class superhero. And we're going to get rid of these uh, things and put in our default implementation. We're also going to have to add an init. And there we go. Now we've got a class superhero. It's our base class. This is great. We can work with this. Um, but it's the first difference that we see between protocols and uh, uh, protocol oriented programming and object oriented programming. So we have to use classes with protocols. We can use value types, um, but with object oriented pro programming, we have to use reference type. Everything has to be a class. Um, and so as we saw before, if we want to make a, a superhero, say we want to do Dr. Strange, uh, we can make a subclass. So we're going to call this class. Dr. Strange, and he's going to be a superhero. Well, that's great. So good. Now, we, now we've got the superhero. And maybe in this base class, we add our fight function. You know, we had a uh, print punch and, um, you know, we're going to have report U N C H and our report re um, print here. I uh, am. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So maybe Dr. Strange, though, he doesn't fight. He casts a spell, right? So we're going to override our uh, fight function. So override fight. And here he's going to actually print cast spell. Okay, this is great. We're doing what we need to do. Um, we can set his name automatically, or we can just leave it as is. This is nice. We're doing well. Um, what about... As we kind of think about it, we realize that, you know, lots of superheroes cast spells. You know, you got Loki. Loki casts a spell. And so I could say, you know, I'll copy this guy and go, uh, oops, not that. Control C. I'm going to call him Loki. And he's a superhero and he fights and he casts a spell. But oh, with object oriented, what I'm going to actually want to do is create a, another intervening class that can encapsulate this information. And I'm going to call it a uh, magic class. And he is also a subclass of superhero. And he's going to take this. He's going to cast a spell. And I'm going to make him now uh, a magic guy. And Loki is also magic. This is cool. This is cool, right? Like these these guys get real real small, and that's that's nice. So now that I got these classes, uh, we might decide. You know what? Let's add a function cast spell here in our magic class. So we're gonna add a func cast spell, and all we're gonna do is print cast spell. And here we can call fight. Where we're just gonna call cast spell. This is great. Um, and we may want to add uh, another class where uh, for flying, flying, right? Right, Doctor Strange, he can fly. Uh, so I'm going to call a class uh, fly, and it's going to have a function called fly, and it's going to do something there. Um, and Superheroes, you know, lots of superheroes fly. So what if I need a superhero that can fly? Well, I could say that he is also a flying superhero. Okay, this is great. So we come into a problem here because we have a magic superhero and we have a flying superhero. 
but I can't call like Doctor Strange can't be magic and fly in this way, right? Uh, -uh he's got multiple inherits. You can't you can't inherit uh, from multiple uh, classes. Now I could say, well, let's put uh, you know, let's say magic here. So instead of a superhero, let's call him uh, magic. Um, but not all flying superheroes are magic, right? Think about uh, Tony Stark. He could fly in his Iron Man suit, but he's not magic. Um, so that doesn't really work. So, so how do we get around this problem? This is where protocols come in. Protocols are great because you can compose them. We can combine them together. We can also inherit protocols like we do classes. So let's see how we can solve this problem with protocols. All right, let's get started on looking at protocol-oriented programming. So I've created this enum to encapsulate the uh, stuff we're going to be working on. That way, the compiler doesn't yell at us when we have duplicate Doctor Stranges or Lokis. Um, and I'm going to add a protocol for each one of these types. Um, so we've created our superhero protocol. We're familiar with this. We've worked on this one uh, on, in previous videos. It's just pretty simple. They report, they fight, they have a name, nickna uh, nickname. I also created one to represent flying. I'm saying, hey, we got he's got a fly function, and uh, we're going to have a magic protocol. So now how do we use these to create the characters that we want? When talking about uh, protocol-oriented programming, there are three key features in Swift that allow us to really tackle these problems. The first is uh, what we've seen in a previous video, uh, which are extensions to protocols. The next is that we can compose protocols. And also the final one is that we can do protocol inheritance. Um, for instance, on the inheritance, what if I say that I want every flyer to be um, a superhero or every magic person? So I can say those guys are always superheroes. Um, and so that is really great. And I can also compose them uh, like this. So if I want to say, let's make a type alias, um, a flying magic hero, and he's going to be a flyer and a magic and a superhero. Now, of course, they're already superheroes, so I don't really need to add that part, but I could. The compiler doesn't care. It works. It's great. Uh, we're all uh, big pals here. And I can also add extensions to all these protocols to provide our default implementation. So I'll do that real quick with um, extension. And we're going to have to do pop dot superhero. And we're going to say our uh, funk fight. We're going to print. Oops. Um, we're going to print uh, hit, and we're going to do another extension. Let's go with the, uh, like we did on uh, the magic. Instead of fight, we're going to also do funk uh, cast spell, print cast spell. And here we can also override that to do call cast spell. And this is pretty cool default functionality. And now if we go back into here, we can create our characters. I'm going to create a uh, struct, Dr. Strange, and he's going to be a flying magic hero. And we're going to let our compiler tell us Give us this uh, the stubs here. And so fly, I'm going to print use cloak of levitation. I think I spelled that right. Yes. And uh, report print here. Uh, here I am. Great. And notice we can use structs for this. Um, with object-oriented programming, we always have to use classes. So now I can use value types. Now, value types are great because they're thread-safe, because they just get copied. Anytime I send them anywhere, they just get copied. So this is great. 
Um, they're also easier to use because you don't have to reason about that because they're threat safe. I can go, okay, well, this guy is immutable in this context. He's just going to be here and I don't have to worry about him. So there are a lot of benefits with uh, being able to use value types and uh, protocol oriented programming allows us to uh, utilize those. Now I can make our struct for uh, Loki and he's just going to be fly, uh, not a flyer. He is a magic and he's a superhero. Or I can just say he's magic and notice because it inherits from there. He's going to ask us to do all of those. And he gave us the ones that we still needed to uh, provide. Here I am. All right. Now, the thing to see is that we have these extensions that gave us the default magic implementations. That's why we're not being asked to put those uh, in either of these structs, but I could override uh, them. Um, and in fact, I could probably override Loki's fight. Uh, right? And I'm going to say he's going to print stab something. Right? Loki likes to stab things. Um, and that's what is so powerful about protocol-oriented programming. We can compose, we can mix and match, we can do whatever we need to get the structure of our code to look like what we want it to look like. Um, a, a good way I've uh, heard it said is that with object-oriented programming, you're thinking about the objects themselves, like what is the object? Whereas with uh, protocol-oriented programming, the things that we are passing around, what we're interested in is what can it do? Not what it is, but what can it do? Because we're dealing with protocols, which are just interfaces. And so we're, that interface tells us what this object can do. And so that's really where our interest lies. Whereas with object-oriented programming, you're interested in what it actually is. Now that, that tells us what it can do, but it is not the main focus of the object itself. All right, to demonstrate this, let's create a static function inside our pop enum. And I'm going to call it print powers. It's a pretty simple function. If it's a hero that can do magic, he's going to print his name and he says that he has magic. And if it's a flyer, he can print that he flies. And if he's a flying magic hero, it's going to print that he can do it all. All right, let's look at these in action. So I'm going to create a Loki character and a Doctor Strange character, and I'm going to print off each of their powers. And if we hit print, we run this. It's going to say Loki has magic, Stephen Strange has magic, Stephen Strange can fly, and Stephen Strange can do it all, as indeed he can. So this is where it really shines, right? With object oriented programming, you can't do this. I can't compose things like this. It gets really messy. But with protocol-oriented programming, I can compose. I can just look at the functions. I was able to just pull out, hey, this superhero, I know he has a name. And that's all I care about, that he has a name. So I can pull off his name. I can see and check that he is also magic. And it makes it so that in your code, you can pass these structs around. You can pass classes around. You can pass enums around. Anything you want. And you can extract the information or the actions from it, and that's all you care about. I hope you found this video informative and helped you understand the importance and the value of protocol-oriented programming. Using these tools, you can definitely increase the quality of your code, its testability, its usability, its composability, and in all ways, make it a more robust system. Please hit the like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.